Hello, welcome to our noonday time for reflection and, and prayer on this Thursday, May 21st, which is Ascension Day, a feast day on the calendar of the church that, that commemorates and remembers and reminds us that, that Jesus rose to heaven after his time with the disciples and the people following Easter. We are now coming to the close of, of Easter tide and Ascension Day is one of those markers of the end of this season, but it's also the marker of something new and important. I thought maybe today we would talk a bit about Ascension Day. We'll read the scripture and have a little reflection on it, but we'll use the order of service found in the prayer book on page 103 for noonday prayer. As you can tell, I'm in my office at the moment, and you might just hear in the background Joel practicing on the organ. It's one of the delights of where my office is, is that I can hear um, our organists practice over the years, and Joel is in this morning preparing our recordings of our music for Sunday. So maybe, maybe you can catch a note or two as our service goes along. We begin on page 103. If you'd like to follow along in the prayer book, please do. Or if you'd like to just listen, make yourself comfortable. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for Ascension Day is Psalm 93. The Lord is King. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He's made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves, mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure and holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The passage of, from the, the Gospel of Luke appointed for today, this passage follows the post-resurrection journeys of, of Jesus in the midst of the disciples. And this ends his presence, his visible presence in their midst. Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Jesus then said to his disciples, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to him, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them as far out as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him 
and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Here ends the reading from Luke. What makes Ascension Day a special day? Well, the account of the ascension, of his, of his leaving them, of his being lifted up into heaven, that told both at the end of the Luke, uh, Luke and then by the same writer at the beginning of Acts, helps us, I think, answer that question. Luke tells us that after gathering the disciples together, Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He blessed them and withdrew into heaven. It seems that it should be a moment of sadness in so many ways. Jesus has left, after all. But the scripture tells us that Jesus' disciples were filled with joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. For the disciples, the ascension marked a significant change. But they understood that it was not a change to lament, but a change to celebrate. In his ascension, in his leaving them, he somehow became more universal and more accessible to him, to them, more available. There's a collect for today, we'll pray it later. Jesus ascended far from heaven's that he might fill all things. Jesus is not confined any longer to a specific place, a specific territory or time. His presence and love becomes available to all. In this hard and confusing time, it seems like it's sort of an odd day for celebration. And yet, this is exactly what we ought to be aware of, what we ought to be ready to celebrate on a day like this. It's a beautiful spring day, even though we're in the midst of this virus time and this separating time, and maybe even this isolating time. It is a time to celebrate because God's presence marked by Ascension Day, marked first by the resurrection, marked first by Christmas and the coming of Jesus as God's presence into our midst, marking through his suffering and in his resurrection where his presence is palpably noticed and felt and heard by the disciples and those around them. And now marked at Ascension in a different way, that God's presence is truly universal, is truly present all over the world, all over our lives, in every little corner. Now you might say, well, no, it's not. He's in heaven. So the question is, what, what, what is heaven? Where is heaven? You know, we're so geographically focused and the Bible helps us stay that way sometimes, I think, by focusing on the names of towns and places. But heaven, as we know, is, is not a place. Or it is every place. It is the consummate understanding of God being in our midst. And Ascension Day is a marker of that for us. Those of us who were with um, Jake Owensby's book last evening at our class will note that he focuses using a different piece of scripture uh, from Revelation about how God comes to make all things new. He says God will come to dwell in our midst. God's presence will transform our bruised and battled world into a new heaven and a new earth. That's the mystery and the celebration of Ascension Day, that somehow God in Christ has moved from merely being amongst this small group to being universally 
available, universally known, universally shared. May it be so. We continue with our prayers. The love of God has been poured into our midst through the Christ, through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I pray you have a good Ascension Day. I pray you are alert to the heaven in which we are thrust and to God who is in our midst. Be well.